Guys, what's up and welcome to this new lesson by me, Ranjit Krishnan Nair. And in this lesson, we'll basically see the previous year questions of the AIEEE exams, which uh, from the chapter of uh, Work Power Energy, which have been previously asked. And we'll start off with two questions, which can also be solved using rectilinear motion and can be solved using Work Power Energy as well. And then we'll move on to a question of uh, spring. And lastly, we'll see a question that relates uh, the momentum of a system of particles with the kinetic energy of the system of particles. So let's uh, begin. And as usual, before we delve into the lesson, let me briefly introduce myself. I did my BTEC in Electrical Engineering from IIT Madras and I cleared the J Advanced exam as well as the J Main exam back in the year 2010 with these ranks. And I currently teach for uh, competitive exams like J, NEED, KUPI, Olympiads, etc. at Resonance Quota. And if you would like to learn from more uh, courses by me, then you can follow me on www.unacademy.com slash user slash at the rate RKN. All right, so let's see this uh, AI Triple E question, which was asked all the way back in 2002, basically the year uh, approximately when uh, the AI Triple E exam started. So the question is as follows: From a building, two balls A and B are thrown such that A is thrown upward and B is thrown downwards, both vertically. If V A and V B are the respective velocity on reaching the ground, and here by velocity, actually what they mean uh, here. What they mean is actually speed because the vectors can't be, you know, there is no inequality in vectors, only in scalars. Uh, the magnitude of vectors, of course, can be compared. Uh, so here, uh, they what they mean is speed on reaching the ground then. And uh, remember, one more uh, information is given that both are thrown from the building with the same speed. And these are the options that is VB greater than VA, VA equal to VB, VA greater than VC. Uh, VB and uh, fourth option that their velocities will depend on their masses. Remember that the masses are also not given. So as usual, pause the video, attempt the question and then we'll discuss the solution. All right. So I hope that you have attempted the question. As usual, we'll apply the work energy theorem, the one theorem from which you can solve most of the questions, if not all of the questions. Uh, for uh, let's say the A particle was thrown upward like this and the B particle was thrown downward like this and both were thrown with the same velocity V. So I apply work energy theorem and I'll get work done by gravity maj into h, h is the height of the tower, is equal to change in kinetic energy. Now half ma va square, let va be the final velocity of a or speed of the a minus half ma v square. v was the initial velocity. Same equation for b. When I solve these two equations, what I get is that uh, masses get cancelled and we get V A is equal to under root of V square plus 2 G H which is same as V B. When you calculate V A and V B here both will come out to be same which indeed says that V A is equal to V B and option B is the correct answer. Now if you look at the answer closely you'll also see that it resembles that of the third equation of motion of the rectilinear motion so that is also correct you can apply the third equation of motion and from there as well we get v square is equal to u square plus 2 as u is obviously same as as uh, the displacement is same the acceleration due to gravity is same so obviously the final velocity uh, the magnitude of the final velocity will also be the same so that's uh, the two ways in which you can solve this question let's move on to the next one now this is also similar to the previous question in the sense that it can be solved both using work power energy as well as the rectilinear motion concepts. Now let's see what that question is. The speeds of two identical cars, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, identical cars, that is the, they are exactly the same, are U and 4U at a specific instant. The ratio of respective distances over which the two cars are stopped from that instant is so we have to find the distance over which two cars are stopped from that instant and these are the options uh, this was asked in uh, again AIEEE 2002 as usual pause the video attempt the question and then we'll discuss the solution all right so i hope that you have attempted here if the speed of the cars are the in the ratio 1 is to 4 then it is pretty obvious that the kinetic energy will be in the ratio 1 is to 16 because kinetic energy is equal to half mv square and since it is directly proportional to the square of velocities and the velocities are in this ratio kinetic energy ratio will get squared it will become 1 is to 16 as simple as that now more importantly since the cars are identical the frictional force will also be same. So since the car is identical, there cannot be any different brakes. Same brakes, 
same frictional force will act so you can write down work done again applying work energy theorem work done is equal to changing kinetic energy final kinetic energy will become zero and that's why zero and initial kinetic energy is half m u square for the first car so from here i get that it gets stopped in the after moving distance x so x becomes uh, u square by 2 mu g for the second car i assume that it travels the uh, distance y so minus mu mg into y is equal to uh, final kinetic energy zero minus initial kinetic energy and in initial kinetic energy the velocity is 4u so when i solve that i get y is equal to 16 u square by 2 mu g and if i compare x and y then the ratio of x is to y is actually 1 is to 16 so that actually gives option d as the correct answer let's move on to the next question it's very easy uh, a spring is given with force constant uh, 800 newton per meter has extension of 5 centimeter Work done in increasing the extension from 5 cm to 15 cm is. As you can see that it's really really simple problem so I expect you to do it very fast. Uh, as usual pause the video, attempt the question and then we'll discuss the solution. <coughs> Alright, so uh, let's uh, discuss the solution. I hope that you have attempted and uh, it's very simple actually not much brain is required or not much explanation you know that you know spring potential energy is half kx square so work done on the spring can always be calculated using this formula that is final potential energy minus initial potential energy that's it if the potential energy increases then you have done the work and if the potential energy decreases then the spring has done the work on you all right so uh, just substitute the formula in si units that is very important because this is centimeter and this is in si units so you have to take care of the units when you take care of the units and just substitute in this formula will directly get 8 joule as the answer one more thing that i must remind you that uh, the potential energy is of course half kx square and most of the students know this uh, you should also know this that when you differentiate potential energy what i get is kx and kx is nothing but the force of the spring and last but not the least if you differentiate u that is if you differentiate the potential energy then i get kx into dx uh, by dt so dx by dt is velocity and kx is force and force into velocity is power and this is exactly what power is the rate at which uh, the power is being delivered to the uh, spring or you can also think of it as uh, this is power delivered to the spring that is equal to the rate at which the potential energy is being stored in the spring so that's some additional info or uh, information that i wanted you to have because uh, you know some questions can be asked on this subtle concepts which are not very uh, well known all right so let's see this question very interesting very conceptual question it says consider two statements first the linear momentum of a system of particles is zero okay second assertion or statement is that the kinetic uh, energy of the system of particle is zero so these are two separate cases what we want to know is which statement implies which one okay so option a is first implies two and two also implies one uh, option b is one does not imply two but two does not imply one as well and uh, c option is one implies two but two does not imply one and d is one does not imply two but two implies one now a lot of implications and counter implications let's uh, pause the video attempt the question and then we'll discuss the solution all right so let's just write down everything whatever we have been given mathematically simple write down the momentum it is m1 v1 plus m2 v2 plus all the way till m1 vn and similarly kinetic energy is half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square the summation of all these quantities and both are given to be zero now obviously if kinetic energy is zero then all these individual terms have to be zero because even if one of them is non-zero positive then there cannot be any negative term so it cannot be zero so it must be that all the terms are zero and if kinetic energy is zero and all the terms of velocity are zero then obviously momentum also will be zero because everything is nothing is moving okay so one does not imply two but two implies one because kinetic energy will be zero if each particle is at rest and if each particle is at rest then momentum of the system is also equal to zero so the second statement actually implies the first statement uh, so actually the correct answer will be let's say uh, two implies one but one does not imply two so option d would be the correct answer in this case 
all right so i hope you really like this lesson and if you did please rate review and recommend uh, the lesson and you can also enroll in upvote and you can follow me by clicking this button and you can enroll in this course especially if you are attempt going to attempt the neat and aims examination in the coming month and uh, recommend the lesson afford the lesson uh, by clicking on this button and if you have any queries doubt and feedback then please comment away in the comment section and uh, uh, make sure that you share this video to as many people as possible so that those who cannot afford the benefits of quality coaching are also not left behind and lastly uh, but not definitely not least uh, please rate the course five stars if you really liked it or if you helped it uh, and if not then please let me know how can i further make improvements so that you can finally rate it five stars because after all it's the ratings that really motivates us guys uh, to make more and more awesome courses for you so that's it from my side in this lesson let's see you in the next one bye bye